So we look at the roster now on the tight end position specifically. And especially that the issues with Waller, you know, it makes you think should we add a free agent to the tight end group? Without Waller, I mean, let's be honest what you got. You got Daniel Bellinger. One good year, one bad year. You got Theo Johnson, a rookie that you have no clue what to expect from. A couple blocking tight ends and a guy who's a decent receiving option on off the bench. That's what you got. Yeah. Kind of leaves the, the position a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Just to pay the bills before we got get into these tight ends. Oh. That's we'll why I'm here. Afterwards. We'll pay the bill afterwards. All right, all right, all right. We'll do it after. We already started this segment. We'll do it afterwards. All right, all right. So here's the options. We uh, I, I was looking up. We got best options here available. And again, I always caution people with this because though somebody's gonna be like, Oh, these guys suck. Listen, what do you expect? That's it's May guys. <laughs> yeah. It's May. Like the draft is over. And these guys are still there. You're not going to get the best of the best of the best, sir. Not going to happen. But we do have one, I think, intriguing option, if he was cheap enough, and if the Giants wanted to go that route. Yeah, and That's Logan, yeah. Logan Thomas. With the Commanders last year, 55 receptions, 496 yards, uh, four touchdowns, 32 years old. Now he's getting a little long in the tooth there, but as a one-year stopgap kind of guy, I couldn't hate it. Like, let's say we want to keep four tight ends. And we go ahead and say, you know what? Fine. Let's get Logan Thomas. We're going to go ahead and keep Bellinger, obviously, and Theo Johnson. Let's keep Chris Manhurst as a blocking tandem. We'll keep four, four tight ends in the roster. Now you have two young, two old. One good at receiving, one good at blocking that can teach the youngins. Mm. It's 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 like I said, it's a dynamic I could see potentially working. Now, the one issue you always have with Logan Thomas, though, is he would probably fit right in with the Giants because he can never stay healthy. I was gonna say so. <laughs> it's always the issue with him. He's 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 that guy that you look at and go, if he could have just stayed healthy, what kind of player would he been? That's honestly where he is. Because that year, last year, was the second most receiving yards he's ever had. He's only had 2,000 receiving yards in his career, guys. And you think back at Logan Thomas and how long he's been around. And you go, no, that can't be right. Because every single year he's been that guy. Oh, this will be the year he breaks out. This will be the year he breaks out. And a lot of that was especially because his first year at Washington was his best year at 670 yards, six touchdowns. Six uh, seventy-two receptions. I mean, that's that's pretty damn good numbers there. If you can put that yeah. up consistently, you're a legit receiving tight end. But then he only played in six games the next year, and he just hasn't been the same the last couple of years. But he's still been better than what we have in the roster, especially from a receiving threat option. So, like I said, if he's cheap enough, and that's a route the Giants might want to do. I'd be kind of curious about it. Um, another option we got is Robert Tanyan, uh, former Packer, last played with the Bears last year. Eleven games, sorry, eleven receptions, one hundred and twelve yards. He's thirty years old. He had five hundred eighty-six yards, was his, was his maximum receiving back in twenty twenty with the Packers. There, primarily used as a blocking tight end last year. Obviously, he was the backup tight end, basically to Cole Komet, who was kind of their their semi star at that point do. there. Um. Honestly, it doesn't excite me. Doesn't excite me. I don't think of him as go, okay, this is better than something else that we could that we have right now. Besides Tyree Jackson. No. <laughs> um another option. It's a big name now. Jimmy Graham. Yeah. Only uh, 337 I years old. Yeah, played last year with the Saints, six receptions, 39 yards, and four touchdowns. Imagine having four touchdowns and six receptions. That's crazy. Um, he's 37 years old, obviously a two-time 1,000-yard receiver with the Saints there way back in the day, uh, back before electricity roamed the earth. Uh, but, yeah, he is. he's just done. Again, he's 37 years old, guys. 
He didn't even play the year before. He was out of the league for a year. Yeah, the Saints brought it back because that offense is going to do anything. Yep. And he did something. I mean, I'm not saying the guy's done done, but I'm just saying when we're rebuilding, I don't know if a 37-year-old tight end we have no prior affiliation to is who I want to bring in. Correct. So the other option is bring in a 40-year-old tight end. Mercedes Lewis, who also last <laughs> year played with the Bears. Uh, four receptions, um, 29 yards. He's a pure blocking tight end at this point in his career. Um, he was a one-time pro bowler back in the day with the, with the Jags and had a couple good years for them. But that seems like a decade and a half ago because it was a decade and a half ago. Uh, he's turning 40 this month. 18-year veteran. 18 years in the NFL. Especially at the tight end spot. My God. Oh, my God. You know what's crazy is he was like, he was drafted six years after Brady. I'm just putting in perspective how long Brady's career was randomly. Because 23 damn, years. Yes, that's insane. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, I look at him as a blocking tight end. We have enough blocking tight end options. I don't think we need to add another one there. So the only, like I said, the only legitimate option I look at is Logan Ryan. I said Logan, yeah. Logan Ryan. So Logan Ryan was the old safety for us. Logan Thomas. Wrong Logan. <laughs> getting my logans mixed up hey bob <laughs> <laughs> talking to me bub let's go I, you know i can't not do a wolverine impression not say bub i don't know yeah have you x-men the animated series you ruined <laughs> you ruined any other options for me hey bub <laughs> anyway uh logan thomas is to me the only option that i would even consider and i don't know if it's a need and the main reason i say this is because even without having uh Darren Waller there would potentially signing somebody else stifle the development of the other guys that we want to develop on top of the fact that Logan Thomas will probably get hurt again anyway. Touché. Not to be a jerk again. I, I feel like a jerk when I say this. Thing. I always like at my back my what if they happen to listen? Oh <laughs> e. E. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, that's honestly what I look at is that's the biggest concern I have is you're going to potentially stifle somebody's development for a guy that you don't plan on keeping long term and maybe he'll just get injured himself and then you lost valuable time in camp with these guys starting. You know, you're taking snaps away from them for a guy that you can't trust to be on the field. So, um, again, it sounds mean, but it's the honest truth. So, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't hate the move, but if Waller... We, retires hypothetically just keep it as is guys we got enough I, holes. I was gonna say yeah we got enough holes unless logan thomas wants to come at ver- like a vetman kind of deal let's get a vet minimum we can pay him a million dollars and a million and a half whatever it is what the hell so you're saying to fill the holes oh yeah fill the tight oh, end hole what, what? <laughs> whoa, whoa. get up whoa. in there fill it whoa <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Two Giant Goofballs, a New York Giants podcast. We appreciate your support. Thanks so much.